Hello, my name is Ian Martini. Today I'm going to present a collaboration between myself, Gabe Kapchuk, Adam Aviv, Dan Roach, and my advisor, Eric Wistrow, on improving Signal's sealed sender. Signal is an end-to-end -end encrypted messenger. Users type text or multimedia messages, and before they are sent to another Signal user, the message is encrypted under a shared encryption key. This means that the content you send another Signal user cannot be read by Signal or any other man in the middle. While Signal is the focus of this talk, as they are the only messenger to have a sealed sender feature, the subject of this talk is platform agnostic, and any end-to-end -end encrypted messenger can adopt our protocol to implement one-way and two-way privacy. The functionality of end-to-end -end encrypted messaging from Signal's point of view is that Alice will create a message, as seen here, by encrypting some text and addressing that message to Bob and putting the return address as himself. Alice sends the message. Upon receiving this message, Signal will determine which device to send the message to. And when Bob receives it, he can decrypt the message, read it, and reply if desired. In this talk, we will focus on signal identities, such as Alice or Bob, as users have the capability through Tor or Orbot of hiding their IP address from Signal if desired. Recently, Signal has seen a huge influx of users, to the point where the registration text required to verify phone numbers was delayed up to an hour for some users. This, along with the fact that other end-to-end -end encrypted messengers, namely WhatsApp, use the Signal protocol, demonstrates the incredible influence that Signal has in this market. Features and designs that Signal introduce have a major effect on the state of end-to-end -end encrypted messengers. As alluded to before, this talk will focus on the metadata associated with Signal messages. The power of metadata cannot be overstated. In fact, former NSA and CIA director Michael Hayden explicitly stated that the US government kills people based on metadata. You may have noticed in the motivating example that even though the message is encrypted, Signal is still directly aware that Alice was messaging Bob. To address this, Signal introduced the idea of sealed sender in 2018. Let's look at the structure of Signal messages. A Signal message has a simple structure, to, from, and encrypted content. The content is unreadable by Signal but the to and from fields provide a direct link between Alice and Bob. In a sealed sender message, the from field is moved inside the encrypted message, and a public ephemeral key is left on the outside to allow Bob to decrypt the message and determine Alice as the sender. From Signal's point of view, the functionality is not changed. They have no need to see who a message is coming from in order to deliver it. So now, Alice encrypts their message and their identity, and on the outside of the envelope addresses it to Bob so that Alice can deliver it, and attaches a public ephemeral key that allows Bob to decrypt the message. Alice sends the message, Signal receives the message, and delivers it to Bob. And thus, Signal has solved the metadata problem, and everything is perfect. In fact, if this is the only message that Signal receives, it is perfect. However, let's examine a more realistic scenario. Alice sends a sealed sender message to Bob, as before, which Signal delivers. Immediately afterwards, Bob replies to this message, also is a sealed sender message, which Signal delivers to Alice. There is now a correlation between these messages. Given the quantity of messages that Signal receives, this may not be an issue, especially if Bob takes a long time to reply to messages. However, let's look at one last component of Signal messages. There are three stages of a sent message in Signal and most messengers today. As Alice sends the message, it will display with a single hollow check mark, signifying that Alice has received the message and is forwarding it to the recipient, Bob. When Bob receives this message, it will immediately send a delivery receipt back to Alice, which will be sealed sender if enabled, which will show a second hollow check mark on Alice's phone. When Bob actually opens their phone and reads the message, they may send a read receipt, also sealed sender, that will fill in both of the check marks on Alice's phone. Additionally, there are certain event messages that are also sent sealed sender, 
In particular, if users enable typing notifications, then starting typing and ended typing notifications will be sent. We will focus on the delivery receipts, as read receipts can be disabled in Signal, but delivery receipts cannot. That is, after every message sent to another Signal user, that user's device will immediately reply with a, del with a delivery receipt, which will be a sealed sender message if enabled. Let's examine a malicious or compelled signal that wishes to identify who is communicating with Bob. They will execute a simplified statistical disclosure attack where they keep track of all users who receive a sealed sender message after Signal sees Bob has been sent one. When Bob receives a message, this begins the target epoch, where Signal will listen for a time for all users that receive a sealed sender message. As there are millions of users, this table will grow quickly. After the tar target epoch is closed, Signal now has a long list of potential candidates who may have messaged Bob. Some popular users may have received multiple messages during the target epoch. To address the issue of popular users obscuring who is actually messaging Bob, a malicious or compelled signal enters the cleanup phase, where they listen for another random epoch where Bob has not been sent a message. The users that receive message is during the random epoch will be deducted from the table for each message they receive as their conversations are uncorrelated to Bob receiving a message. After a single round of target epoch and random epoch, we may not have a clear picture as to who messaged Bob. Thus, we wait until Bob receives another message and repeat until there is a clear front runner. The question is, how many epochs are required to correctly identify Alice as the sender who messaged Bob? To begin answering this, we first measured how long Signal would need to listen for a response from Bob. By timing on local phones the time between when a message is sent and the mandatory delivery receipt is received, we found the median time was just under a second and a half, and 90% of delivery receipts were received in under two seconds. We then ran simulations with reasonable guesses at user behavior and user base size to estimate the number of epochs necessary to identify Alice as the sender. As can be seen from the left side of the graph, with a short amount of time between sending a message and receiving a delivery receipt, as we see in practice, we estimate only dozens of messages are necessary to identify Alice as the communicator with Bob. Additionally, we found that the number of epochs necessary to identify Alice scaled linearly with the length of the epoch, showing that introducing a delay in the sending of delivery receipts would be ineffective as a defense, while also nullifying the benefit of the delivery receipt. We further examine the likely case that as a targeted individual, Bob will, will receive messages from multiple users. What we found when we simulated Bob receiving messages from six total users was that while the range of ranks of users who messaged Bob after only a dozen messages may be large due to the individual who initiated a target epoch changing, as seen in the green band of the graph, some of the messages will be identified as demonstrated by the lower part of the green band. In around 100 total messages to Bob, all messages will be identified. The key component of this attack is that while the from field is obscured from Signal, users are still messaging long-term identities, such as Alice and Bob. We present the following simple solution. Alice opens an ephemeral mailbox anonymously using an eCache like system of tokens allotted each day, wherein she also registers a push notification channel for the mailbox. Alice then sends a message to Bob using sealed sender, where the from field inside the encrypted content is now a reply to field, also inside the encrypted content, listing the mailbox opened by Alice. Bob's replies, including delivery receipts, typing notifications, and read receipts, are now sent to the mailbox. As Alice's device is subscribed to the push notification channel for this mailbox, it is forwarded to their device. As the mailbox is ephemeral, where users can specify the length of time to use a given mailbox, and the proof necessary to open a mailbox is anonymous, which we'll discuss shortly, there is no tie between the mailbox and Alice. This creates one-way privacy, the goal of sealed sender, 
where messages sent to Bob are directly addressed to him, but the responses are sent to an anonymous mailbox, obscuring one party of the conversation. One-way privacy can be extended to two-way privacy. As before, Alice opens and subscribes to a mailbox. When Alice sends a message to Bob, he opens a mailbox. In Bob's reply to Alice's mailbox, Bob also specifies their mailbox as the location Alice should address. Conversation continues through these separate ephemeral mailboxes. This gives a malicious or compelled signal only a single opportunity to tie the mailbox to Bob when he opens it immediately after receiving a message. As we've shown before, the magnitude of messages that Signal processes requires dozens of messages to de-anonymize users. But in the case where they do successfully de-anonymize Bob's tie to their mailbox, a malicious or compelled signal still gains no information on Alice or their mailbox. A major concern with any new feature is bad actors implementing a denial of service attack using the new feature. If any user can create any number of mailboxes, a bad faith actor could shut Signal down by requesting more than they can support. To ensure that Signal is not overwhelmed by mailbox requests, they can adapt an eCache-like method of blind signatures on a certain number of allocated tokens to each user each day. Each token can be verified to Signal using the blind signature protocol to access a mailbox. Let's examine the blind signature protocol in more depth. First, Alice will generate an ephemeral public-private key pair. This will be the public key she attaches to messages so that Bob can create a shared key. Alice will then blind the key, in our case, using the RSA blinding method with a random value. Alice will then send this blinded key to Signal with their identity. Signal will first verify Alice has not hit their quota to open a mailbox today and sign the blinded key and send the signature back to Alice. Alice will privately unblind the signature to use as proof uh, that they may open a mailbox. As Signal never saw the unblinded key, this signature is unlinked to Alice. With this signature and ephemeral key pair, the true functionality of one-way privacy is as follows. Alice will request to open a mailbox with their ephemeral public key and unblinded signature. Signal will privately verify their signature on this unblinded key and open a mailbox and subscribe the device to it without knowing Alice's identity. Alice will then construct their message to Bob with the mailbox at the replied to address and the public ephemeral key so that Bob can construct their shared secret and determine Alice is the sender. Bob continues conversation as before, sending the replies, delivery receipts, read receipts, and typing notifications to the provided mailbox, which will be forwarded to Alice. This exemplifies the protocol for two-way privacy as well. The solution presented here uses only simple crypto tricks, efficiently using the RSA blind signature scheme to allow provably anonymous communication between signal users. The scheme is easily deployable. We were able to estimate on AWS a monthly cost of $40 per month for millions of users. We have demonstrated a targeted statistical disclosure attack using Signal's sealed sender. This attack is possible in part because of mandatory and immediately immediate delivery receipts on Signal messages and because of the use of long-term identities. Our solution uses mailbox that are a simple cryptographic and engineering task that deliver on the promise of Signal's sealed sender and as the capability of two-way privacy. Thank you for your time. Any questions?